from Couple Birdies. We are here at Troy Byrne and we have Brady with us. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming out. You bet. We're super excited to be here and can't wait to get out and play some golf here this summer, spring yeah. summer. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to Troy Byrne. Yeah, so I, uh, I grew up here in Hudson. Um, I played high school golf. Um, I, I fell in love with the game at a really young age. My dad put a club in my hands when I was probably like five years old and just brought me with him and I'd run around the course. And, um, you know, when I was younger, golf was all about fun, right? Yeah. Like just getting out there, enjoying the, enjoying the nature of it and never really worrying about my score. Um, then I'd say about middle school yep. area, started taking it a little bit more seriously, um, kind of got a little bit better. I was always really small. So like, you know, I, I was decent at team sports. I was yeah. always a really good role player. Yep. But golf was the one sport where, you know, I didn't have to rely on anybody to pass me the ball. You know, it was yeah. kind of all on myself. So I really fell in love with it. Um, you know, I, I just, the game has given me so much. And when I went to college, I, I originally was going to be a gym teacher. And then I changed <laughs> my mind, you know, like three, four times. Yeah. And, Ended up graduating with just like a marketing and sales degree. Um, did sales for about nine months to a year. Figured really quickly corporate life was not for me. Nope. Um, and I've, you know, I've worked in the golf industry since I was like 16 years old, just washing carts. And yep. um, I got the opportunity to be an assistant pro and I, I took that. And this is one of the, the best parts right here is, is all of the community that we have around Absolutely. us. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I just fell in love with it. And after college, I, I was looking for something I could be really passionate about for a career, and, and golf just really lined up with it. So, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, it's exciting to have you here, and maybe tell us a little bit about, like, when you started off golfing. Yeah. At a young age up to now, do you still play a lot of golf? You know, I, I didn't get in the golf industry to play more golf. <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody yeah. ever does, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's such a common misconception is, you know, your local pro plays more golf than anybody, nope. right? Where right. It's, the, it's the complete opposite. Um, I got into this to let other people enjoy the game and, yep. and be a, a resource for people to enjoy it even more. So I play a decent amount. Last year, I think I clocked in like 12 full 18 hole rounds, yep. which is definitely <laughs> low, but... Um, you know, I, I'll always try and get out there for like a twilight nine with my wife for or, sure. you know, try and do some chipping and putting here and there. Yeah. If I'm playing in a tournament, you know, I'll, I'll ramp up my practice schedule a little bit, but yeah, definitely not as much golf as one, one would think no, being in the industry. especially, well, it's hard to, I'm sure, separating once you're working all day. I know, cause I've worked at a golf course for a long time, trying to play golf before or after, Golf's just not the same because then you see all the members, everybody's asking questions and wanting tips and tricks. And it's it's great because you're still helping, but you can't get in the zone. You can't For get sure. in the golf zone. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, we're so lucky here. We have, you know, arguably some of the best facilities in the area. And, yeah. Um, you know, I, I will never take that for granted, but I am a firm believer that anywhere where there is a cup and a flag and some tee boxes, I'll go tee it up anywhere. So Absolutely. I like to sneak out to the little local courses here and there, play a par three course with my wife when I can. But yeah, it's, uh, my career has definitely leaned more towards the management side. So, yeah. you know, I'm in the shop a lot and I'm running tournaments and doing outings. So I, I have no problem with that. I love seeing other people enjoy the game. Yeah. Tell us a little bit for our viewers that don't know the golf course. Tell them a little bit about Troy Byrne. Yeah. So history. it's a it's a Tom Lehman design. Um, back when we first opened, it, we had you know some of like the Nike Tour events out here. Yep. Um, it was really designed to be an upscale course or in the area, right? Yep. We were kind of lacking back in the day. We had the old Hudson Golf Club in town, mm -hmm. which was an awesome course, but you know, it was, it was old school. It was very tree lined. It yep. was old school country club vibes. Um, so when they designed this, you know, as, as you can probably see behind us, quite a few yes. bunkers out there. <laughs> um, I believe there's 127 of them throughout our 18 holes. Um, but the course is fantastic. If, if, 
you can come out and play once a year mm -hmm. and spend a little bit higher of a dollar on, on your tee time, uh, do it. That's worth it. Yeah, <laughs> it's worth it, absolutely. You'll walk off the 18th, and whether you shot 110 or you know your best round ever, yep. feeling super happy that you did it. Yeah, the fairways look like they're rolling hills a little bit, so it's not going to be too much of a flat course. I'm sure the greens roll really nice. From what I've heard, they're some of the best around, yeah. so that's super exciting too. Yeah. So talking this year and this season, it's a little bit different. I know there are obviously local golf courses open and you guys are not one of them. Tell them why you're not open and kind of what's going on with that. Yeah, so, you know, obviously the weather's been weird this winter. Yeah. We'd love to get people out there, <laughs> um, but we actually don't, uh, we don't airify our greens or you know put any fertilizer down yep. until we shut down for the year. Right. So that way it doesn't get in in the middle of people you know in their rounds and you don't have people coming in complaining mm -hmm. about the punch greens when right. they just spent a hundred and some bucks on a round. And um, we found that it works out really well for us to shut it down a little earlier, give the course some time to breathe. So when springtime rolls around, you know it's in great shape as ever. Absolutely, yeah. and it I mean it's it's hard being a golfer to look at golf courses end of December and be like, okay, there's no snow, why yeah. am I not out there golfing? My golf clothes <laughs> are still in my trunk. Yeah. So you guys have played some golf, your wife plays some golf. Have you played any top-notch courses or do you have any bucket list courses to Oh play? man, my, my number one on my bucket list, I want to take a trip out to Bandon really yep. bad. Absolutely. It looks like just an oasis out there. Yeah. Um, I want to do that with my dad when he retires and yep. take a trip out there and experience that. But. You know, I'm a local kid. I've mm -hmm. played all the local courses around that you can yeah. think of. Um, you know, there's so many great golf courses in the area that right. you, you don't have to go far to find a good one. You know, you can travel 10 miles either way from here and find a pretty good golf course. Yep. So, yeah. What's your favorite golf course other than Troy Burn? Other than <laughs> Troy Burn in the area. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a tough question. Um, White Eagle's really great yep. out in, out in like the North Hudson area. Yep. It's super picturesque. It's gorgeous. You might not play your best round ever nope. there. It's a really <laughs> it's challenging tough. course. Um, but I do love White Eagle. I think they have a great staff out there. They, they're really accommodating and the price point is phenomenal to play out there for any random day. You can go out there and 18 in a cart is like 70 bucks. But nice. That's yeah, it's tough to get a tea yeah, time absolutely. out there though because it's, it's a hot commodity. Right, but, well, yeah. especially with everybody post COVID too, still wanting to play golf and for sure. making tea times, what, a week in advance when we yeah. used to be able to just go out there and grab the clubs and go and yeah, yeah. get a round or two in quick. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, we, uh, back when I was, you know, 16, 17 years old, I used to be able to roll up just about anywhere with my dad yeah. and, you know, go play around. But now it's, yeah, like you said, you got to have a tea time at least a week in advance. Which is hard for yeah, a lot of people. Like, sure. I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. Right. <laughs> yeah. Nonetheless today. yeah, exactly. So let's talk equipment. What kind of golf clubs do you play? So I actually just signed a staff agreement with TaylorMade. Nice. Um, I've been a hodgepodge guy my whole life, though. Yeah. I've, I've played Mizuno, TaylorMade, Titleist. You name the brand, it's probably right. been in my bag. Um, the one thing that stays true is my putter. I've had that since I was 17 years old. Yeah. And when you find a good putter, it's, it's, it's tough to get thing. out. You yeah. And you don't need to. I know <laughs> there's certain clubs that I think everybody has. I think... For a long time, I had two drivers in the bag, or yeah. you have two three woods in the bag. One, you know, you can hit a stinger on if you need to. You can hit it up high. You can do anything and everything with it. And then, obviously, you want to go new technology, so sure. trying new things out. For sure. I'm kind of, uh, I, I, I like to refer to myself as like an old soul trapped in a young body. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I love just going out and digging it out of the dirt. I don't get yeah. too caught up in gear and nope. all that stuff, you know. I enjoy nicer clubs, of course. Who right. doesn't? But... Um, yeah, I, I call them tools, not jewels. <laughs> yeah. Golf is mental too. And I think a lot of our viewers see that they experience it, but they don't always know how much it can get in your head. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can speak to this pretty well. I mean, I played a lot of tournament golf when I was in high school and I got really caught up in trying to play in college and I you know, I, I took an offer to play at a junior college down in Iowa yep. and about like three weeks before I was supposed to go down <laughs> there, I just got so burnt out of it. You yep. know, this game can beat you up and it will beat you up more than it rewards you. Yep. Um, but you know, it, I took a, took about a year off, didn't touch my clubs for a year and just kind of fell in love with the game in a different way and yeah. appreciating it for more than just what score you put down on a card. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's where I'm at too. I mean, I played high school, played college, played D2 college, 
Played every single day. Yeah. And you get to the point where it's it's fun, but it's not as fun because you know every single swing. You know every shot. Yeah. Everything gets in your head. You do get burnt out. And now coming back at it, I'm working and I'm living my passion. I'm able to do podcasts. I get to travel around, talk to people, have websites, things like that. And it's just, if I hit a bad shot, I hit a bad shot. Right, now it's exactly. like, it's whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you're going to hit maybe three, four really good shots around. Yep. And in the middle of those shots, you have to just kind of minimize the damage that you're doing out yep. there. Um, it's, it's such a great game because it, it really tests you, you know, it like does. you can be three feet off the green and make a double bogey any day. So yep. it's, uh, yeah, the mental side of the game, I think it, that's the best part about it, right? Sure. You're always on this never ending journey and that's what golf is, is a journey, right? Yep. Even when you play nine holes, it's a two hour journey. It you're, is. You're, you're, whether you're walking, you're riding, it, it's who you're playing with, where you're playing, you know, it, it's amazing how you can continually challenge yourself through the mental aspect of yeah. it. And I think with being a female golfer and a lot of the ladies out there, it's intimidating. Oh, and for they sure. haven't gotten into that realm of, I need to just be good enough to go play nine holes with my husband or go play nine holes with the girls or I don't want to miss. Yeah. And getting that consistency down or having the time to, because <sighs> golf is time. More yeah. than any other sport, you're not just going to be a natural at it, no matter how much you try, whether you're Tiger Woods or whomever you are. Yeah. It's a lot of time put absolutely, into it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, th it's so funny you say that. Every, it, it seems like every gal that I give a lesson to, I yeah. always start off every first time lesson with, what are your goals with golf? Yeah. Like, what do you want to accomplish? And more times than not, it's, I want to just be able to keep pace with my husband or, yeah. you know, not slow anybody down, yeah. right? And, and that's an okay goal to have, right. but I always like to push it to be, you know, measurable, What's right? Next? Yeah, what, <laughs> okay, after you can make solid contact and keep yep. up, like, then what? Because right. there will become a point, no matter what your skill level is, where you want to achieve that next thing. It's, to me, golf is kind of, as you're talking about that too, it's, it's always about improving yourself. For sure. It's not yeah. about a battle against anybody else, even though a lot of people feel that or see it, especially when you're playing in tournaments. Yeah. It's, okay, I hit a bad shot, watch my next one. Yeah, <laughs> what yeah. What can I do next? <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. <laughs> so you've given a lot of lessons. What, what is your favorite kind of go-to when you start everybody off? Yeah, so I, I love working with a variety of different people. At, nobody will swing the club the same way, right? Oh, that, right. That's just a kind of a common misconception mm -hmm. about the golf world. Right. Um, you know, there's these instructors out there that have their system mm -hmm. and I don't really have a system. I, I take what you have and I try and eliminate your Achilles heel, whatever is killing you the most yep. in your golf swing. And I try and just eliminate that. And then once we get to that, then we can fine tune things and get you to be a much better ball striker. If that's what it is, if you struggle around the greens, like I love going out with people on the course and seeing how they play golf. Yep. Cause then it can give me a real insight of how, you know, how where, really where are you play. losing your strokes, yep. right? Yeah, what, what's the big things that are holding you back? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't have one set in stone methodology right. of the swing. And you really can't. No, yeah, you, you can't overcomplicate the golf no. swing. It, it's such a fine, fine detail thing that you can sit there and really get lost in your own head if you let yourself. Yep. But at the end of the day, you're just trying to get the ball into the cup in as little amount of strokes and as possible. And it's a little cup. People don't sure. realize how little <laughs> it really is when you're out there, for but sure. it is. For sure, for sure, yeah. So I know a lot of people, when they are first starting off, they don't want to put time in. Yeah. They just want to go out and play. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I'm, I'm torn. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think you learn the most out on the course right. instead of just hitting balls at a target on the range. Because, you know, if you hit a bad one on the range, you can just grab another one and, right. and go ahead and play. I'd say there's, there's a definite fine balance of the two, right? Mm -hmm. You want to do your on-course practice. I'd say use the course as a practice tool yeah. more than anything. Don't be afraid to hit a couple of balls at a right. shot that you are, have just found that you need to learn how to hit. Like, you know, it, I always Pick tell rough next to the green yeah. and you don't know how to get through it. Yeah, I always tell I always tell the people that you know, like a lot of the high school students that I work with, the course is your best friend. Yep. The range, there's no pressure there. No. You can you can hit balls until your fingers fall off on the range and not really it's, accomplish anything. And it's a simulator too. It's like okay, you could even if you practice, hey, I'm gonna hit a driver three wood, five wood. However, you're gonna do it like yeah. you're playing out on a golf course. It's always the same one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. One of the fav one of my favorite things that I did when I was a kid 
is I would take, you know, my worst ball. I'd hit two and I'd play my worst ball in because yep. how often are you getting a perfect shot in golf, right? right? Yep. And if you were, you wouldn't be where we are today. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So a lot of kids want to just get out there and play. Do you think that they should start off on a par three course just to get familiar with the clubs and everything like that? I do. That yeah, I do. And it can be overwhelming out there. It is. You know, yeah. if, it, if you go out there on a busy day, you know, you got people yeah. behind you, in front of you, you got to keep pace. You got an angry ranger yep. rolling around telling you, you gotta that you're playing. You got to know the playing. rules. A yeah, lot of times people rules. don't even know the rules and they just want to go out there and yeah. use a seven iron all the way around and it's like... Yeah, Let's get to the heart of it. I know. Yeah, and you know that's great. You, it's kind of a baptism by fire sport. You yeah, know, you got to right. you got to just jump in at some point. Yep. But I'd say my biggest piece of advice is get comfortable on a par three course. Yep. Hit your irons. Like you know, try and get those down first before you worry about your driver that's and everything. I mean, it like really that. is. You can it hit is. a driver all day long. Yeah. And then you have to hit a low seven iron. Or yeah. You have to chip and run it, or you have to do anything. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, the par three courses. I love par three courses. Yep. I think they're awesome. You, you work on so many different parts of your game other than just your wedges on a par three course. Yep. You know, how to get up and down from a tough spot, and how to. It. That's where you score, right? right. And that's what oh, the absolutely. game is about. It, it, the you game is about scoring. You could have four strokes just on the green when it could take you one to get up there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I. I love taking kids out to par three courses. You know, my mm -hmm. wife, she just started a couple years nice. ago. That's where I taught That's her exciting. to play. Yep. And, um, she actually played more golf than I did this year, which that is incredible. Happens, right? Yeah, I know. which is incredible. <laughs> so, yeah, the par three courses are such a great tool to get people into the For game. For sure. Yeah. And they all are different. Mm -hmm. I mean, the greens roll differently, the sand is kept. I mean, they're not just like the old school par threes that they used to have where it's just beat to the ground yeah. and everybody's on them. And... Hitting off of mats. And... Yep. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we've talked golf clubs. We've talked lessons a little bit. What is next or what do you think you want to do next? Do you want to kind of roll it more into somewhere down the line like a a professional head to lead professional yeah so I've been extremely lucky um, to be in the spot that I'm at today yeah. um, like I said when we were just talking earlier I actually grew up here as a member when I was a kid and mm -hmm. um, Dave Tentis our head pro he's been amazing to me you know yeah. he he's he's the one that got me out here to work here and mm -hmm. I was kind of in limbo last year not really sure what I wanted to do yep. if I wanted to stay in the golf industry um, it's a tough industry it is you know it, it is and it's super rewarding on the mm -hmm. other hand you get to impact so many people's lives and right. um, but yeah I mean Dave's been great I, I can't thank him enough for all the things that he's taught me in just a year. And, yeah. you know, I'd like to work under him as long as possible just to continue learning. I would love to be a head professional someday. Absolutely. Um, hopefully here once Dave yeah. wants to retire, but nobody's <laughs> pushing him out. Soon, yeah, no. No, nobody's pushing him out. I mean, right. we want to keep him along, keep him around for as long as possible. He's, he's built a good club and there's a lot of changes that have happened here too. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's built this place, you know, essentially from a couple years after it opened into what it is today. Yep. I mean, and he carries such a weight around the community that mm -hmm. it, it Which would Which is be, important, it especially is. around here. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the golf industry is such a tight-knit community. Yep, you you really want those is. people in your corner, and you want those people to stick around for as long yep. as possible. <laughs> Just keep leading sure. the way, and yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, roll with exactly, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's talk PGA a little bit. Yeah. Who is your favorite golfer? Oh, man, I grew up a Tiger guy. Yep. Yeah, I grew up a Tiger guy. But I think the interesting thing now is is all of these guys are so good. They are. You know, yep. they're, they're all so good. Any given week, one of these guys can roll out there from being 150th in the FedEx Cup race yep. to win in a, you know, everyday tournament that they call them now, you know, the John Deere, the yeah. 3M, like, but those are, those tournaments are so impactful for them. It they gives are. them the confidence they need. You know? And or it helps them when they're in a slump. Yeah, I mean, you get exactly. the Justin Thomas playing at the 3M Open. You get Tony yeah. Fino winning it. You just don't know. It's good to see a sport like that where they can be human. Yeah, for sure. And they can sure. really get in a slump just like the rest of us. For sure, yeah. I, I love Jordan Spieth, too. I love his yep. fiery energy. I love how... He doesn't hit it the straightest, but no. he'll, you know, like we said, he's good at scoring the ball. So yep. he, that's his, that's his knack. But yeah, I, I just, I love golf. I love the mm -hmm. golf at the professional level. It's so fun to watch those guys, how talented they are. Um, you know, it's, it's such a big gap between, you can take any plus three handicap yep. out here and it's not even close, no, you know? Yeah, right. it, they're, they're just so talented. They're 
so dedicated to their craft too. Yeah. It, it's something well, to admire. The way golf has changed from nutrition wise to now it's all it's all a lifestyle. I mean, For sure. you're, you're working out differently, you're eating differently, you wanna get longer but yet the balls are rolling back, the clubs are getting yeah. shorter, everything changes yeah. every single day. Yeah, for sure. And you know, these guys are, they're athletic specimens. So like, Absolutely. you know, they, they work really hard at keeping their bodies up tuned and um, it's fun John to Daly. see it. Yeah. <laughs> but I he's mean, still, he's, that's yeah. his own fine tuning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's an anomaly, but he's, right. he's been able to do it for some time. Yep. But yeah, I mean, I think it all started when Tiger started just killing the ball. Absolutely. You know, he, he was yep. ripping his three wood pass guys with their driver. And I think people started to look around. Well, and, now look at Charlie too, yeah. like 300 yard drives at, at 14. 14. Yeah, I, I don't, oh. <laughs> it's amazing. People it humbles talk, you. Yeah, yeah, it humbles you. Well, and they talk about his attitude. I'm like, okay, first of all, he's 14 years old. Right. He's a kid. He's yeah. learning the process just like everybody else. Yeah. I know they came down on him hard after PNC saying, hey, he's not holding himself well or he's waving by at his drives, but he's a kid. He's a kid. He's yeah, a kid, you, you still know? have to have fun with the game. Yep. You know, he, he doesn't have fun and he gets on that tight journey like Tiger was brought up. Yeah. With everything. It's. It's mentally, but it, it's fun. And yeah, it keeps it fun. It has to be fun. More than yeah. anything, the game of golf has to be fun. You know, it, it amazes me when you get guys that, you know, I see it every day. You know, they come out and they don't play their best. And, yep. you know, they let it tarnish their experience of their day. And right. it, let's be real, we don't have infinite amount of days. No. <laughs> you know? And if that were the case, nobody would be playing golf. Exactly. I know there's more good days and I'll go out on the golf course and I'll be like, what am I doing? Yeah. Or yeah. total opposite, having a really, really bad day, and I'm like, I'm just going to go on the grind. I'm just going to go hit some balls yeah. and go play and mentally clear my yeah. head. Yeah, use it as an escape for yep. sure. So, live golf, what are your thoughts? Oh, man. It's, uh, it's, it's tricky. You it know, is. these guys are getting thrown a lot of money that can change not just their lives, but, you know, their next four generations. Yep. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Oh, Hi. good. How are you? Um, you know, you have these guys that are getting thrown a lot of money to go play less golf, spend more time with their families, yep. but where's the money coming from? Right. You know, that's the, that's the tricky part. Well, and you give people the Ricky, the Jordan, the Justin, the Tiger props for staying in it for as long as they have. And for sure. Even, well, there's some on the border, like the Tony Finals, the Victors, things like that, yeah. that could use more money. Yeah. They had their great years, things like that, or you just don't know. They're getting older, the younger generation's coming through. Like, For what? sure. Yeah. And I think it, like, you look at Brooks Kepka, I think he was the perfect candidate. You know, he was Absolutely. coming off an injury. Yep. You know, he, he wasn't really sure if he could do it anymore. Right. I remember watching that full swing doc. And, I know, you right? Know, <laughs> that, you seeing him as low as he was yep. for a guy that's as confident as he is. Or he shows he is. Yeah. I mean, that kind of shows yeah. the other side It's of like it. the imposter syndrome thing, you yep, know? Like absolutely. you kind of just have to fake it until you make it when you're out there. Yep. But yeah, I mean, it's a tricky, it's a tricky one. I would probably never, never do it. You know, I right. would, I'm a PGA tour guy. That's how yep. I would, but I don't absolutely. know. I've never had a check some, for 600 million thrown in front of me. someone comes up to me being me. like, okay, you're, you're, you're a mom, you have three kids. Yeah, yeah. Here's, you know, $500 million or or keep playing golf the way it is. I mean, yeah. I want to go to an event just to experience it because it seems like it's a lot of commotion. I yeah. want to see if it's as loud and rowdy as it is. Or yeah. Kind of. And you know, I think the other thing too is like at the end of the day, these guys that we see on TV, as great of golfers as they are, they're still just humans. Human. You know, they're yep. humans. They have to do what they feel is best for their family right. and their future grandkids for for generations to come. And Absolutely. you know, that's a great way to take make sure they're taken care of financially. Sure so yeah. It's, tough subject. <laughs> it, well, it is, but it's good to see that it's bringing change to the tour too. For sure. A lot yeah. of changes are being made, a lot of tournaments, a lot of the way they're running things. I mean, yes, I understand golf is by the book and how it's always supposed to be, but yeah. it's good to see some change too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It is. And you know, I do, I do like the team aspect of it. Yeah. I don't know how popular it will be as far as a viewing standpoint. It's yeah. kind of tough to view it on TV in a team aspect. Yep. 
but I do I do like some of their ideas and with it. They're starting to roll those into the tour too, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's fun to see. Like those the changes. Zurich is such a fun event to watch. You know, their yep. partners going out there in different formats, and you know, the same week in week out can be really tough for these guys. I can imagine just yeah. stroke play by yourself, go make your living. You know. And a lot of our viewers might not know, but their schedule. I mean, yes, you're playing Thursday through Sunday, but you're getting there Monday, Tuesday. Playing you practice have your warm -up rounds. rounds. You yeah. have your pro-ams. You have yeah. meet and greets, all the stuff on camera. Yeah, it, it can't and be easy. you do that yeah, yeah, 200, it, 300 days a year. Yeah, it's, yeah. It can't be crazy. easy for no. those guys. So, you know, I think more of a work-life balance for them would be really great. I think yeah. you'll probably see a higher level of play at yep. the end of it, you know. But it, it is cool to see it kind of getting a shake up. It, yeah. it, it's been stale, stale for a long time. Yep. And you kind of need something to come in and ruffle feathers. It'd be kind of fun to see a PGA Live event. For like sure. One against the like other. Like a Ryder Cup see. style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That would be really fun. Get the fun. John Roms back out there against Rory. Yes, and yeah. Yeah. Golf is, I mean, ever changing and it's super exciting. What do you think out here at Troy Green you guys have coming up in the next couple of years? Do you have anything or you've added on some areas? Yeah, here? yeah. So we actually just put in simulators this last winter. Nice. We put in four track man units, which has been exciting. so far within the last nine weeks that we've had them. It's been a hit already, yep. you know. So I think that's one thing that has gotten super popular within like the it last has. 10 years is yep. simulators. You Even know, in the last like three to five, I mean, we have one at our shop at Sun Control. Yeah. And I'm using that thing, we use it daily. Constantly. But you start seeing all, it's not just Top Golf, it's not X Golf. Now it's everywhere you go. You have the par 365, yeah. and just every typical bar restaurant starting to add golf simulators or yeah. other simulators. In yeah, too. and for us, it's a great way to keep our staff on board throughout the winter time. Yep. You know, every year, this is our first year being open all year round. Nice, that's exciting. Yeah, so that's really cool for us to be able to keep our staff on because we have such a great team. You yeah. know, like we, we wouldn't, be able to operate without the team that we had around us yep. and it, it's awesome to be able to keep them on throughout the winter time and give them something to be really excited about yep. like hey we've got you know the new wedding center and simulators down there Absolutely. and our members are loving it you know they only have to drive a couple hundred feet to get right. here now you know and so. you can play golf through the winter yeah, time yeah exactly some of our viewers or a lot of our viewers aren't from minnesota maybe tell them what a typical winter is like here in minnesota cold and long <laughs> yeah cold and long don't know why we're here yeah. but we are yeah, you kind of just get sucked in and, you, yeah. you know, you just really appreciate the people that are in this part of the country. Yep. Um, I actually, for the first 13 years of my life, I lived out in Pennsylvania and yep. totally different culture. You Absolutely. know, it, the hustle and bustle <laughs> out there is very real. And you come out here and people are just very appreciative and they want to have real conversations with you. Um, but yeah, the winters around here are usually really long and really yep. cold. And that's why we travel to the nice courses that yes. are around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if we can. We use winter as our time to kind of reset and do yep. some bucket list things for Well, sure. I know before simulators came around, obviously the nets, the domes, yeah. just trying to get out and keep your swing as fresh as possible or going out into the garage yeah. and just swinging the golf club, just yeah. trying to stay limber. I remember when I was a kid, my dad set up like a painter's tarp in our, in our basement, yep. <laughs> you know, and I was just hitting foam balls into that all winter. And, yep. you know, now they have these incredible pieces of technology that mm -hmm. can not just help you get better at the game throughout the winter time, you know, it gives you every number that you can think of. Which <laughs> when I started golf, like we were taking our paces, we were walking out on a golf course, like, okay, I know I'm 150 and I'll take 10 steps and I'll be 140 yeah. in. And yeah. now it's like, let me get out the scope. Yeah, let me or, get my range finder. Yep, yeah, oh, tough life, right? Yeah, and right, <laughs> yeah. No, it's... It's it's a it's, numbers game now. It is, and yep. I'm... My brain doesn't work like that. You know, it, I'm such a feel player that yep. I have to be able to, you know, kind of feel it in my feet, what the lie is doing and everything yep. like that. But the numbers, it's... It's such an advantage for these better players, it you is. know, to really understand the numbers the and smash factor even on ball. my even my, even on my end, you know, teaching. Mm -hmm. Hey, we see that you're swinging at 15 degrees with a you know right. 15 degree open club face. Like obviously, we need to fix that. Yeah, there's so, something there I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah for, for the sure. R the RPMs, everything else. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. The technology is great, but it, at the same time, I think it allows the younger generation to get really caught up in that, yeah. you know, oh, I yeah. need to carry it. So, you know, an X amount of yardage if I ever want to play mm -hmm. at the next level. 
where you, you kind of get lost in the fact that you still need to put the ball in the you cup. Still has to be, well, <laughs> yeah. it has to be straight too. You're yeah. like, great, I'm hitting yeah. it. I'm in a simulator. I'm hitting it. I'm carrying it 300. Okay, well, get out on the golf course. It's going to go 300 left yeah. over the water or into the water yeah. or whatever else. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you can get really caught up in playing simulator golf. Yep. And, you know, oh, well, I shot four under, so yep. I, I should be well, able to go shoot Well, and it's different. You're hitting under. off of almost a like perfect concrete, lie. a perfect yeah. lie of time. <laughs> yeah. and you get on a course and you, one foot's up and one foot's in a trap. Yeah. All right, so we were just talking winter time with everybody and the viewers. Yeah. Let's go back a little bit to... Uh, the pros in their rot routine, or when people kind of come out here, what do you see a lot of people do? Do they just pick up their clubs and go, or do you see them hitting the range first? Out here is a little different than most public courses. You know, more times than not, I get a lot of people that this is their round of the year, that they're coming yeah. out and they, they show up an hour early, they go through their whole warm-up yeah. routine, stop at the bar to get a drink. Absolutely, <laughs> you right? Know, or yeah. two or three Yeah, or exactly, <laughs> exactly. But... I think the biggest thing is is not trying to change anything on the range, you know, 40 right. minutes before you head out to your tee time. Yep. Just go out there, feel it out, you know, how are you swinging it that day? Are you playing a cut? Are you playing a draw? And then just head to the first tee with, you know, the utmost Good confidence <laughs> that, you know, you know what you're doing out there, yep. you know? That's the biggest thing is kind of feeling it in yourself that you can go out and play. And yep. it's so funny, you know, we, we play a game that at the end of the day, Nobody asks you your score right. besides the people you're playing with. Right. You know, you, you don't come Or they home know when you're playing and yeah. it's just kind of one of those. Yeah, yeah. but we all feel it. You know, yep. we all want to go out every time we play to be our best round ever. So yep. it, it's such a special thing. There's no leaderboards out here, nope. you, you know, but you, you feel a leaderboard oh, yeah. on you yes. at all times. <laughs> that one shot will keep you either yeah. coming back or, well, they're good or bad. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. So... It's, it's fun to watch so many people take it seriously when they come out here. Yep. You know, they're playing a nice course. They want to play well. And they enjoy themselves. They do. Yep. Yeah, you know, and, and that's kind of where we have such a fun job. You know, we yep. get to have people out at their favorite course or, you know, they've been looking forward to this for so long and being able to meet those expectations for, for sure. them, that makes your day. You know, Absolutely. you get somebody that comes like, in yeah, after the I could say I'm round. having a bad day, but I'm watching someone out here that's never played here. Yeah, and, and they're just living it up. Them out yeah, the yeah, they're just yeah. living it up. You know, the best compliment ever is when, you know, somebody comes in after their first round playing here and they're like, this place just blew me out of the water. Yeah. You know, it, yep. thank you guys for having us. And it's like, well, thank you for coming out. Absolutely. You know, like, thank you for saying yeah, that, giving yeah, us the compliment. Exactly. Not just the warm customer service. Exactly, but yeah. I mean, it's so fun to have people out and experience it, whether it's their first time or their 50th time. Yep. It, it kind of never gets old out here. Have you played a course that has completely blown you out of the water? Like when you walked up to it, you're like, okay, this is what golf is about. Oh, man. It, it's funny that I that this one comes to mind but keller over in oh, the yeah. cities yep. like it, the old school ways old the school. short straight yeah. yep you pull up you see their dining area yeah. and it, it's so old school you see all the tournaments that the twin cities opens that they used mm -hmm. to have out there and kind of reminds me of like the caddyshack type course for from sure back in the day. for yeah. sure yeah and you get on that first tee and you know it's only a 340 yard uphill par four and you kind of just take it in and you look at the clubhouse and yeah. you're like, there's a lot of history on this property, Absolutely. you know, and you can say that about a lot of the courses around this area is, but they maintain that old natural look they and do. feel. They do. Yeah. Which is so cool. Even after their renovations that they did, they were able to keep that old school feel, yeah. which will keep you coming back. Absolutely. <laughs> it time doesn't matter what, what the course is like, you might be, you know, five and a half hour round, but guess what? You're still playing and you can still have that feel. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, Keller just comes to my mind when you ask that question <laughs> for fun. sure. I know, I, we just played, I mean, I've played a lot of golf courses and I think there's one golf course that I don't know even if Pebble would be able to top and that's Old Head of Conceal. I know I talk about that a lot on our <laughs> podcast, but when you walk out there and Mark, who's been playing golf maybe for four or five years, he just walked out there and he's like, you just, your jaw drops. Yeah. You see the old cemeteries at like Belly Bunyan, but you get out to Old Head, you see the lighthouse, you see the 300 foot drops, you yeah. see the wind and the rain. And it's just like the old traditional, what you expect, like St. Andrews type course. For sure. Yeah. yeah. You yep. got to be where your feet are, right? Yep. So it allows you to be in those special places. But it's hard to golf when you're so taken aback by the yeah. golf course. Yeah. It's like you're out there, you're like every single shot and every hole is like, Wow. Yeah, like, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. That, that's got to be incredible to experience yep. for sure. 
I know there's a hole 12 out there, kind of, I'll stop after this, but hole 12 out there is the world's hardest golf hole. It's one Tiger Woods called, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a par five. When you tee off, you're hitting right into a cliff. So you have a total blind drive. Yeah. Second approach shot, you, if you hit a 250, 300 off the tee, you'll still have, I think it's like 592 yards, dog leg left. But when you get up to the green, there's a flag on top of the cliff that's blowing straight left into the Atlantic, the wild Atlantic. Yeah. The green flag is blowing straight right. So you have to hit it just right. Otherwise, yeah. you know, it's either going to be in the water or it's going <laughs> to go into the cliff. It's just, it's fun. It's like, that's, a, that's just cool. That's it's why you fun. play, right? Absolutely. Like just to have those experiences and to be and able to look. play with people that you want to play with. Exactly. And just make exactly. those memories. Exactly. So you said your wife has been playing a little bit more golf. Yeah. And she's been playing par threes and everything like that. How often do you guys get out? Um, you know, we try and get out at, at very minimum, at least once a month during yep. the summertime and just enjoy each other's company right. and, you know, be out there just to have fun and enjoy it. We love to walk. Like oh, we, yeah. we, we love the walk. That's the way the golf was should be played. It's <laughs> yeah. different. Yeah. When you walk, it's like you're in your own zone yeah. and you're doing your own for thing. For sure. Yeah. And she, you know, she actually caddied for me for the first time nice. this summer and that was such a fun experience oh, yeah. you know she was yep. she was ready to be done by about whole 15 but you know it was hot and it yeah. was it was a long day but she's she's so supportive not just with my golf career but you know just me trying to better myself as a person and being able to share golf with her has been Absolutely. really fun and at first she was super apprehensive didn't really want to play and then really golf Come yeah <laughs> and then a couple of her friends started getting into yeah. it and she's like I guess I could get behind golf you That's know good. and then yeah like I said she played more than I did this summer which That's, is incredible that's awesome. That's super exciting. I yeah. know that there's a lot of males and females, both because I've been on kind of the side of it, that don't understand golf, don't want you to play golf, yeah. kind of give you that whole little just don't do it. Or yeah. they give you a hard time if you want to go and play. But guess what? It's healthy. It's, yeah. it's exercise. It's something to do. It clears your mind whether you're just getting out there and playing golf. Yes, it takes four hours or four plus hours sometimes. Sometimes it might take an hour and a half. But the atmosphere and when you come home, you just, you feel better about yeah, yourself too. For sure. for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing better than playing golf with some of the closest people in your lives, Absolutely. you know, and that's the thing too, is the friendships that I've created from the game of golf. I mean, yep. the, I could name countless of them, you know, right. it just, I still keep in contact with the guys from the other schools that I used to play against oh, in yeah. high school. Because you, know? you, that's, you almost live more with them than you do your own family because sure. you're out there on the grind and for they sure. know every shot and Hey, remember Remember that one time or yeah. let's, let's go play again. Yeah. And it, you know, golf can be such an isolating sport, especially if you're trying to play at a competitive level that yep. it's so important to surround yourself with people that are going to support you through that journey. Yep. Or even if you're just looking to become a single digit handicap, you know, right. it takes a lot of work. It it's takes a, a lot of practice and you got to have the people around you to, to support you. So yep. yeah, the, the people you meet in your golf journey are definitely the best part <laughs> about it. Yes. Without a doubt, because they've been through the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows and and the yips and yeah when people yeah. get those it's hard to get out of those sometimes sure. it's just a mind game when you are teaching or helping people and they get stuck in a slump what do you do I always say you know like this game right now can be the most consuming thing. Yep. Sometimes it's best to just take a step away. Yeah. You know, yep. like how often in the springtime have you picked up a club and your first two rounds have been so <laughs> great, right? Yep. You don't have a lot of thoughts right. going on. You're just out there enjoying it. And I always tell people, just make sure you're enjoying it. If you're yep. not having fun, let's take a step away for a little or bit and come back up, to do it. something yeah. to get your mind off yeah. it. Don't Tim Cup it and yeah, exactly. get all the gadgets and gizmos and My just gosh. try to work through yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you can become so technical and yeah. it, it, that can be the worst thing for you. Yep. You know, you got to just kind of take a step back every once in a while. It depends on the level of player though. If you, if you right. got somebody that's really talented and they're trying to work through a swing change, oh, absolutely. then you need to just kind of keep you have pushing. To grind it. Yeah. You yep. just have to keep pushing until you see yourself on the other end of it, mm -hmm. um, which is super rewarding once you get yeah. there. But when I mean, you're in the, look at like Ricky Fowler, he went 100%. through it, Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas. I mean, they all do. They all it. do. Yeah. Every Tiger back morning. in the yep. day. Tiger's an anomaly though. He, he was still, still is doing it. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do you think that he'll play once a month like he's talking I hope so he's yeah. so good for the game when he, he plays you know the fan base just everything yeah such a polarizing figure in the game of golf I right. mean he he still moves the needle at however old he is yep. I mean 
mean, it's it's crazy. I hope he does. I hope his his health can stay right. up there. Yep. I'd love to see him play up until he's you know on the senior tour and whatnot. Yep. But um, you know, I I hope he can play once a month. I think it's really yeah. cool that Charlie and Sam, his kids, are Absolutely. able to see him compete at this level again oh, yeah. too. You yep. know, it's, it's really special. Yeah, for sure. I know that with Tiger and with a lot of them too. I mean, he had 142 missed cuts. Yeah. The one missed cut he had was was I think the week his father passed away. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 amazing for people that didn't grow up or didn't like golf back in the Tiger Woods area to see him now and then think back to where he was before. For sure. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that streak was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody, I mean, yeah. whether you were in golf or not in golf after him, you're in golf. Yeah, for, for sure. sure, for sure. So, well, we appreciate being out here today. It's yes. super exciting. We love to see what you're going to be doing with the golf course. We'll take some pictures before we leave and get out here this spring and play some golf. Yeah, can't wait to have you guys out. Right. Thank you so much yeah, for coming thank you. out. Yep.